Hi guys, Mr. Pollock Biology here once again. We're back with paper two, um, a run through of the super secret teacher only specimen materials uh, for the new AS or A, A level or AS level, whatever, um, biology exam. The exam's on Tuesday. I know it's been last minute. I've been out of the country. I'm really sorry. I'm going to try and bash through this and hopefully you guys will find it as useful as my last run through. Um, before we begin, it's probably worth saying that there's quite a few questions um, that are very likely to come up on this uh, the second paper next week. And they're the ones that are on the topics that didn't come up on paper one. Things like osmosis, things like the heart, in particular calculating heart rate. So we're thinking about things that are um, more experimental in nature and more calculations and all that kind of stuff. So just bear those in mind um, and I'll, I'll talk you through them as and when we get to them. But let's start with question one. Uh, which is actually a really nice starting point. This is actually more fact recall, a little bit of application in there, but we're, we're told here that many humans are una unable to digest lactose and that a scientist has investigated the production of lactose-free milk uh, and he produced gel beads containing the enzyme lactase and placed the beads in a column and he poured milk, uh, milk A into the column and collected milk B after it had moved over the beads in the column. Now this is like a GCSE question. Those of you who've done um, AQA uh, GCSE biology will recognize this as a typical enzymes and in industry question. So on these beads you've got the lactase um, stuck there, you pour the milk through, uh, the enzymes do their thing and you collect your product out of the bottom. So the first question is uh, why does milk A um, contain, why does milk A contain uh, no glucose but milk B contains glucose? Well, all we have to say is that the lactase enzyme has hydrolyzed or broken down or digested uh, the lactose, which is a disaccharide. And as a result of that hydrolysis, we get two monosaccharides produced. We get glucose, which is what the question's asking about. And more power to you if you remember that the other monosaccharide that comprises lactose is galactose. So that's where our um, glucose has come from. The enzyme has done its thing. It's, it's hydrolyzed. It's broken down the, uh, the glycosidic bond between the glucose and the galactose that make the lactose. Um, and you get those two monosaccharides as a result. Nice, easy, one mark. So it says the enzyme was uh, trapped within the gel beads. One advantage we're after here of trapping the enzyme. Well, realistically, you don't want to contaminate your product. So what you don't want is that your milk be down here, we don't want that to contain any enzyme, um, but I think the best one to go for is enzymes are great biological catalysts, they can be t used time and time and time again, so if you keep them in that column, you can keep reusing them, so it allows enzymes to be reused, and you can run this whole thing as a continuous process rather than a batch process, which is great, nice, one mark, dead easy, let's move on. Uh, now we get into calculations and um, explaining data. So it says the scientists varied the flow rate, so that's how fast the milk goes through the column, um, and the effect of flow rate on the on the concentration of glucose in milk B is shown in table one. So slow flow rate, more glucose, fast flow rate, less glucose. Why is this the case? Well, basically, at 100 centimetres cubed, that's this one uh, per minute, so at... 100 centimeters cubed per minute flow rate is too fast and that we have to explain that a little bit further that means that um, the substrate cannot bind to the active site so lactose cannot bind to active site so you get less, fewer enzyme substrate complexes formed. There we go. And again, nice, not too bad really. Uh, then we've got something that might scare a few people. Got a bit of maths kicking around there. Uh, the gel beads are all similar size. Use the formula below to calculate the volume, uh, the volume of one of the gel beads, the three millimeter diameter. Um, and they give you the equation for volume of a sphere. So all you've got to do is be confident with your calculator bashing. So what you want to do, smash this into your calculator. Uh, R cubed, R is the, um, uh, is 
the radius is half the diameter, so that's the place to, to watch out. And that's where people will fall down on this. So your equation should be 4 thirds times pi times 1.5 cubed. And if you bash that through a calculator, uh, you should come out with 14.14 millimetres cubed. So just watch that radius equals half of diameter. Just watch that, um, because that's where people might get stuck. So, last little question on this one. Um, we're saying that galactose had a similar structure to part of the lactose molecules. Explain how galactose inhibits lactase. So, similar structure with enzymes. The first thing you should be thinking is competitive inhibitor. So, that's the first thing we're going to say. We're going to bullet point this. We're going to say galactose acts as a competitive inhibitor. Oops, sorry. As a competitive inhibitor. One mark. Nice. What does that mean? Well, we get less or fewer enzyme substrate complexes formed. Oops, I don't know what that word is, but it's supposed to say enzyme substrate complexes formed. And that gets our second mark. So this is actually a really nice opening question. We get six out of six for this. It's a lovely enzymes question. Definitely going to be something like this on the paper, so just watch out for it. Don't be scared by equations. Just make sure you know that radius is half of diameter, that sort of thing. And make sure you know your enzymes inside out, because this is going to pop up over and over again at AS level and at A level as well. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I will get the next video up.